So what, what are some of the do nots, right? So we've talked about what they need to do. But if you go back to this caveat that I've placed on you, which is I've, I'm going to make you czar for the day on training here, but I'm going to say, I don't want to see people getting injured. I don't want to mm -hmm. see, you know, I, I want to make sure that there's no interruption of training. Um, yeah. Because again, I'm, I'm going to argue that the older we get, anytime we have interruptions in training, the cost of regain is so high. So how do you factor that into a strategy around training for this person? Okay. Injuries, exercise induced injuries happen in a couple of ways. Um, it's very, very rare that it's muscle that's the problem. Okay. The only problem that you have with the cardiopulmonary system or cardiovascular system is systemic fatigue. That's not really its fault, right? Systemic fatigue. So if you're not overdoing it globally, and this would be your run down, this is maybe you're getting sick really often any number of hormone cascades or out of whack cortisol, testosterone, estrogen, all off, like things like that. Mood, can't sleep, appetite, like that is, those are some of the markers we look for of global fatigue. So if that's not what we're talking about here, you're talking about, oh, I got hurt through my back out, right. knee hurts. Yeah, neck is what this, really, knee is that, back is that, right. What you're talking about is joint. All right, so the only reason joints really get hurt is repetition over bad movement patterns. So as long as you're moving well in those joints, or not moving well, depending on the joint, and not moving at all, rather, then you can really do unlimited amounts of volume, theoretically, until the point you hit systemic fatigue. Because it's not going to be muscle that's going to be the problem. Uh, you'll have some muscle strains and stuff like that, but this is not putting you out for three months, unless you tear something off the bone or whatever. Uh, connective tissue. So it's connective tissue, or it's going to be joint. So how do we keep those things integrated? We need to move properly. Um, so it, the, the the first step I would do if we really had this like 40 year time frame is I would invest heavily, heavily in understanding proper movement patterns. And then I would load them very specifically. So step number one, you need to make sure you can do the movement pattern perfectly with assistance. So this is let's do a squat and put your hands on the on the on the rail and squat all up and down. So, you know, hold on to the band, grab up. OK, great. You can do it with assistance. Awesome. How about body weight only? Great. Step two, you did it with body weight only. Step three, now we can add a little bit of eccentric load. So I want you to just lower the thing down, down to its full range of motion. We're all in good positions. So you're under control. We're great here. And as, if you can do things eccentrically, I don't care what the load is, but you can control, it could be your body weight still. You can control the descent of the push up. You're holding proper position, shoulder, neck, low back. All the spine, which is generally the problem, right? That's all in the right position. Great. Fall on the floor. Start back to the beginning. Great. We're under control. We're good there. At that point, we can now look to get into unilateral. Okay, great. So you did it great when you had two limbs. Can you do it great when just your left side? Yeah. Can you do it great with your right side? Ooh, no. Okay. Now we're going to start predicting, given enough time and enough volume and repetition, we're going to start seeing a weakness which means we're going to have a compensation of movement, which means we may start getting all of a sudden low back is hurting now. Or why is your left knee hurting? Why is your right ankle hurting? Something was probably moving slightly wrong in one position. So we're going to do an ace, uh, a unilateral um, evaluation here, making sure we're fine there. Loaded or Once unloaded? Once you check that, both. Light loaded, okay. We haven't even, yeah. we haven't even got the loaded yeah. yet. Okay. We're just seeing, can you do it? Can you do the movement? Once you pass all of that, now we introduce load. Mm. Okay, great. We also now, once you can do all those things and you pass it with load, now we ask speed into the equation. So can you do these things in the exact same positions when I ask you to go as fast as possible? Second to last step is then you add fatigue. Now you notice, what's the vast majority of time people start a new workout? The vast majority of the way that they progress is they add volume, right? I'm going to go for a mile. I haven't ran in forever. I'm just going to start working out. Today I'm going to run for a mile. Uh, tomorrow I'll run a mile and a half. And after that, I'll go, oh, they just start adding volume. Well, you're adding volume on top of dysfunctional movement. What do you expect is going to happen six weeks, six whatever? You know, if you can do all those things, then I know you move perfectly well eccentrically and concentrically. You can do it in bilateral or unilateral position. You can do it with load when I ask you to go fast and when you get tired rip and roar now. Like we can do whatever. We can do absolutely anything. 
And we're going to do that through a variety of movement positions. So overhead pressing, overhead pulling, horizontal pressing and pulling, lower body hinging, lower body pressing, rotational, unilateral support, diagonal, all over those things. And once we're clear there, now we can start saying, okay, we can put any of these exposures on you that you want. You want to go after cardiovascular system first? Probably a good strategy. In fact, there's actually data suggesting, a paper came out recently showing that six weeks of pure of steady state endurance training, I think this was cycling, like 45 minute cycling, uh, prior to hypertrophy training resulted in more muscle growth at the end of the hypertrophy training than the group that didn't do anything. So being in good aerobic fitness is, is quite powerful and important, even if you're trying to get muscle mass. Um, so you could go after those other goals later. And by the, the way, in that in, study, was it because the cycling trained group had a higher work capacity when they were doing the hypertrophy training? I, th I think actually, let me get back to you, but um, don't hold me exactly to this, but I think the total workload accomplished in the actual hypertrophy training study was the same. They controlled for that. So they almost pair matched them to. I th yeah, I I'm pretty wow. sure which was the That's sneaky super part. That's interesting. Okay. Um, that, that don't hold me to that one. Exactly. Okay. Though. We'll, we'll, we'll take wrong. that one offline. Um, so, you know, cause one of the injuries that I think a lot about and I see it happen, you know, it's the, I, I don't know if this is the classic middle-aged guy injury, but it's that torn Achilles, right? It's the, yep, yep. And, and, and it's usually, I don't want to stereotype it cause I'm sure there's someone in whom it hasn't happened this way, but it always seems to be the athlete who's been a little inactive for a while and then he goes right back to that indoor soccer match and like boom just you can hear it across the gym it's so loud right so you, you're going from not you're going asking a connective tissue in this case the kidney tendon from never contracting more than 50 percent of its max for years to all of a sudden going to a maximal contraction on a hyper loaded eccentric stop and change not gonna, not gonna happen, right? Like this is, this, you're gonna, you're gonna tear something somewhere. Probably won't be in a, uh, an ACL, because Achilles is gonna go first, right? Yeah. That, that's that's why you see that in that age. You see, like you don't really, you don't as often see, in pro sports, Achilles go, um, because it's gonna handle load. Uh, ACL is gonna go first. So in your case, it's the opposite. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that is tissue tolerance, right? Yeah. So th it's very, very easy to avoid with some small amount of tissue tolerance which is basically a fancy way of saying, like just expose the tissue to that demand slowly and increase that demand over time and it's gonna be just fine. Yeah, the- uh, Unless you look excessive. One, one of the things that I, I just find so great for this, um, especially as I'm getting older, is always warming up with some sort of jumping and it's just mm. multi-planar, right? So it's you know really simple is back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, side to side, side to side, side to side, and then it's, one leg out, one like doing the clock. I don't know if you know that drill, right? Mm -hmm. You've got one leg going out to one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock. And by five and six o'clock, you're actually having to spin yourself backwards. And you're always coming oh, okay. back to the center of the clock, if that makes sense. So, mm -hmm. and again, these aren't huge jumps, like, but the goal is just no. to introduce lower leg variability and tension within the tendons and the connective tissue of the lower leg at unusual angles. This is actually why I am a more of a proponent now of running than I used to be for health. Um, I would initially was apprehensive against it because if you look at all forms of exercise, nothing even compares with injury rate than running. Running is by far the highest, nothing will cause more injuries than running for the average exercise for a lot of reasons, right? So I'm like, it's stupid. I actually have changed my thought on that now for this exact reason. Um, just a small amount of running is enough to keep tissue tolerance through most of the lower half to be able to do anything like that. Um, so this is a few miles a week. I think it's, first of all, like something I think the normal human should be able to do is run a mile, yeah. like decently. Yeah. Um, sprinting too, like a little bit of sprinting. And I don't mean like 100% over speed sprinting. Even if this is as simple as, um, you know, sprint the straightaways, walk the corners kind of thing, and you did two laps. That, that's pretty good. Like you're going to stay away from a lot of foot and Achilles related injuries.